Okay, this is going to be a brief video made mostly for my A-level electronics students, but it might also be of interest to other students who are doing a design technology course. So if you're one of my A-level electronic students, one of the first things that you should do is to check the mark sheet. And the mark sheet starts with system planning. And by the way, there are two tasks. Task one is a microcontroller system. So you have to build yourself a small demonstration board that you're going to program uh, the microcontroller using assembly. Task two is a larger, it's described as a substantial electronic system. And both of task one and task two have a system planning section. And task one requires you to identify some qualitative and quantitative terms. And, it, and if you want to be in the top mark band, you're going to need at least three of each. Now, in my experience, most students are able to identify uh, quite a few more than three of each. So that's normally not a problem and you'll notice that there should be two or more detailed parameters with tolerances and so presumably you're going to be doing that for the quantitative terms. Now nowhere does it say that you need to distinguish between qualitative and quantitative terms so it's um, entirely okay to put these all mixed together if you want I mean they don't have to be or you can separate them and a lot of people find it quite convenient they don't have to but do find it quite convenient to present this in some sort of tabular format so put it in a table however I do stress it's down to you it's your decision on how you present it but you most likely find that it's quite easy to then when you complete your final analysis your evaluation uh, if you've got your quant qualitative and quantitative terms in a table then to copy that table and then maybe to extend the table and add additional columns whereby you are analyzing and giving feedback for each one of those things. Okay, so let's have a look at a useful resource. Now the useful resource that I found is an online resource and I'm gonna to link to it from the, this video description. And let's have a look at that now. And I'm gonna zoom in. Now, you should be aware uh, by looking at this, this has got nothing to do with A-level electronics or any electronics for that matter. It's a general, um, it's general guidance for a product design specification, a PDS, they refer to it as. Now, I think that this resource is really, really useful. So as I say, I'm going to link it. So do click the description, the video description. And the thing that I like about it is that first of all, it identifies some user needs. Now these customer needs or user needs are going to drive, it says, are going to drive your product specification. But in many ways, I think these user needs are really uh, or could easily be adapted into qualitative specification points. So for example, um, and this thing is uh, something for woodworking. So the customer needs something that's going to be able to um, work as a veneer press and be able to melt glue. So that to me seems like a quality, quality thing, a qualitative uh, design specification point. You know, it either can do it or it can't do it. It doesn't say about the quantity of glue. It doesn't say about the speed of the glue. And it certainly doesn't mention about how it would melt the glue. Uh, veneer press won't burn the veneer. So once again, it's not given temperatures say it's not saying how it's going to be heating up all it's saying is that this particular quality of the machine is that it's not going to burn the veneer now it's worthwhile noting as i say they don't say about or they don't try to attempt to explain how these things will be achieved 
and it says here, and I think this is really useful, your customer needs should be stated so that they are independent of the way the final design is actually implemented. So, for example, it can melt glue. It doesn't say whether that's going to be gas powered, electric powered or however. And that's really important because then that's going to give you flexibility when you do your investigation and when you do your alternative subsystems, if you're doing an electronics project, to be able to have the creativity and be able to think about the implementation later and not have to do everything at once. There's no reason to say at the early stage how you're actually going to do something. What you need to do is to identify the needs, the customer needs, which can then fairly easily be adapted into qualitative specification points. Now, um, having identified the user needs, it should be fairly easy then to have more detail. And these are fairly clearly going to be quantitative, the quantities. So quantitative specification points. So for example, if you had a veneer press, it would have a capacity for width, length, thickness. It's going to have a surface, flatness. So all of these things are things that we could actually add values to. And you'll see that uh, once again, they put this in a tabular format. It makes it very easy. You might like to use a tabular format as well. They've also um, I, they've linked the specification points to the user's needs. So that's quite nice. And they've uh, prioritized them by importance. I don't see that you have to do that in a level electronics specification point, but you could do if you wanted. They give units, they give marginal values, so a range, and then they give ideal values as well. So um, the marginal values, let's say cost, that one's quite easy to understand. The cost should be less than $800 US dollars, but ideally it's going to be costing less than 400. I like the way that this is laid out. It's not exactly how I would do it if I were going to be doing an A-level electronics project. But then again, I'm not supposed to tell you exactly how to do it or what to do. But I think that you can get a lot of inspiration from this page. I think it's going to help you. And if you're not doing A-level electronics, but say you're doing A-level product design or something else, I still think it's actually a really useful page to refer to. So once again, I'm just I'm going to remind you this link here is going to be in the video description. Okay. And um, hopefully this is going to help you. Okay. That's all.